Welcome to Preaching with Nikki. I'm Melissa Whitkey, and this is Jax. Nikki is outside right now and didn't want to cooperate and be part of the video. So I wanted to share with you our new little guy. This is baby Jax. We call him Jumpin' Jax, we call him Baby Jax, we call him Little Black. Um, whatever you want to call him is fine, but I wanted to share this cute little face with you. He's about six months old. Um, he's a rescue. We're not sure what he is. What do you think he is? Any suggestions? Cattle dog? Part cattle dog based on his coloring we're not sure he's from Texas anyway thank you for joining me <laughs> I apologize I just dropped him off my lap a little bit um, thank you for being here I want to thank everyone who reached out to me last week after my message because I needed the encouragement that you gave me I can't tell you how much it meant um, to know that my message is actually helping people that you're asking me to to continue I can't tell you, again, I'm sitting here trying to encourage you, but I can't tell you how encouraged I felt after hearing the feedback, so, so thank you for that. And any feedback you wanna give me on what you think Baby Jax is, I'll take that too. Last week I told you I was going to preach on uh, more work for more joy, but I feel like God put something else on my heart that I wanna talk about more, and I wanna talk about peace and faith, two of my favorite things that, to think about. I think right now in this chaotic world of ours, one of the things that we need more than anything else is peace. I think that's true at any point in life, but something about getting to the middle of your life seems to magnify the need for peace. You know, it's when we're younger, we, we have so many things that we want to accomplish. We want to have, you know, you know, jobs and we want to earn lots of money and we want to have a big house and we want to go on big vacations and all of that. And I love all that stuff. Don't get me wrong. I love the fruits of our labor, so to speak. Um, but what matters more to me, the older I get, is, is to get peace, to have peace, so that when I go to sleep at night and I'm not filled with worry, I'm not filled with anxiety, that I'm focused on you know, knowing that I did the right thing for that day, knowing that I did what God asked me to do for that moment in time. That's really where peace comes from. But the good news for all of us is that Jesus gave us peace. We already have it. So why are we running around this world not feeling peace? Why are we not peaceful? Why do we have so much anxiety? Why are we so troubled by the things that are happening in this world? I want to read to you what Jesus said in uh, John chapter 14, verse 27. And I'm sure you've heard this one. He said, peace I leave with you. My own peace I now give and bequeath to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. And then he said, do not let your hearts be troubled neither let them be afraid. Stop allowing yourselves to be agitated and disturbed, and do not permit yourselves to be fearful and intimidated and cowardly and unsettled. I mean, all of those things are right the opposite of peace. When we're, we're agitated and we're upset and we're afraid, right? We're not feeling peace. We're not embracing what Jesus died to give us, right? Peace is available to us. So why don't we use it? Why don't we embrace it? I believe the way to get to the peace that God wants us to have is again by surrendering our lives to him. And I know, I know people say, I'm not surrendering my life. I've got, you know, free will, right? And it's true, you do. You have free will, I believe, for one purpose. He's either to submit your life to God or not. To step up and do what he asked you to do or to live in this worldly, chaotic place. And that's your choice, right? Jesus said we're in this world, but not of, our, of this world. We're here to do God's work. And if we don't, we are in this world, right? If we, if we live outside of the peace that Jesus wants to give us, then we are kind of submitting ourselves to the chaos. We're submitting ourselves to so much less than you can have. I mean, it's just crazy to think of why anyone would want that. And I'm here to tell you, I've lived both ways. For the past eight years, I've been living, I've been reading the Word of God, I've been embracing the path, that he's put before me. Again, you know, not boldly, I'm learning, but I can't say that I'm always boldly doing it. Um, but before that, I wasn't living a peaceful life. I, I would have moments of peace, I'd have peace on vacation, I had peace when my circumstances were good. But overall, I didn't have a lot of peace. But now I'm starting to understand what the peace that Jesus wants me to have is. It's that quiet in your soul that understanding that, you know what, I'm doing the best that I can and that's okay. It may not be as good as someone else, it may not be perfect, but I'm doing the best that I can and there's peace in that. But the real peace that I get is doing this. 
There's nothing that makes me feel more at peace than when I'm encouraging other people, when I'm cheering people on, when I'm telling them about what God wants for their lives. God wants each of us to have an amazing life, right? We've talked about that. We've talked about John 10:10, 10, 10, right? We, the thief comes only to steal, to kill, and destroy, but Jesus said, I came that you might have and enjoy your life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. That's where peace comes from, by living the life that God wants us to have. Why would we want more than that? Why would we want to think that we or, or think that we can get peace in this world, this chaos that we're living in? I think it's really sad right now what's happening in our culture. I think that there's a lot of really unhappy people. There's a lot of angry people. There's a lot of people, you know, doing evil things, right? I, I think anger is one of the things that scares me the most. People are living with anger in their hearts. There's a reason Jesus said, do not let the sun set on your anger. Why do you think he said that? He said that, <coughs> excuse me, because he didn't want Satan to get a, a stronghold on your life, in your heart, right? God wants to fill your heart with love. God is love. If you let, if you hold on to anger, it starts interfering with everything else in your life. If you go to sleep angry, if you wake up angry, then you find things all day long to be angry about. That's not peace. That's not God's best for you. I think there's nothing sadder than when people are walking around angry. People are walking around hating other people. What is that? How could you hate so many people? Like I'm amazed at the divisiveness in our country right now. It's crazy. So what can we do about it? That's the, what the message about today is. is. It's about peace. It's about being an example of God's peace. It's about going out there boldly again. Remember we talked about this last week, going out there boldly and being everything that you're meant to be. Everything that Jesus died on that cross for you to have is what you need to be. That's how we change this world. That's how we fix it. That's how we encourage people and bless them and extend love. Remember, we're Jesus' hands on earth. That's who we are. <coughs> I apologize. I'm just getting over a cold, but I want to do this message. This is like my fourth or fifth attempt before I started really coughing. So I'm hoping that I can finish this message. But I really wanted to share the peace of God with you. I wanted to share what's possible for you. You know, it's, it's funny. I was reading um, a wonderful book that I encourage you to pick up. T.D. Jakes. Who doesn't love T.D. Jakes? His new book called Crushing. God turns pressure into power. What an amazing story. I'm just only probably about the third chapter. But what encouraged me right off the bat is you have this great, amazing preacher who's accomplished so much. Um, he's, you know, he's just, I just love him. Anyway, who doesn't feel his energy when you hear him preach? But he talks about hardships that he had to overcome. And even <coughs> he was at you know, a really high point in his life and his mom died of Alzheimer's. And then he talks about his 13-year-old daughter getting pregnant and how these two things kind of hit him back to back at a time when he was experiencing a high and he had all these wonderful things happening in his life. So, you know, he, you, you kind of get to that point where you feel like you have to ask why. And that's something I encourage you to. Don't ask why. There are things we're never going to know the answer to. Or you can ask God why, but don't get stuck there. I think too many people get stuck on the why. Well, why did this person die? Or why did this person get cancer? Or why did this horrific accident happen? Or why? And sometimes there's just no answers. Sometimes we just won't know. And the problem with the question of why is it can keep us stuck. It can keep us from moving forward past that point of the pain. And this is what this book talks about. It's really moving past <coughs> hardship and pain and moving towards what the God's best for your life. Amazing book, I ask you, to, you know, I, I suggest that you consider picking it up and reading it. He's, he's a brilliant man, by the way, um, which I'm sure you all know anyway. But, but that's what every person on this planet experiences really hard stuff. And the longer you live, the harder life can get sometimes. And just like T.D. Jakes talks about, you could be having an experience here real high in your life, and then out of nowhere you get blindsided by something really hard. And sometimes they, you know, things do seem to pile up and come together. I remember when my mom died, um, one of the hardest parts of my life. So when I was listening to T.G. Jakes talk about the pain of losing his mom, it resonated with me. You know, if you're lucky enough to have a good mom, it's really, really hard to get over that loss. But at the same time, my husband had a big contract for, for our company and people lied about him. 
and we lost it. So we had no money, very little money, and we had, and then my mom died, and we were kind of a mess, and then my husband had like a breakdown because of it. And understandably, it was hard. I'm surprised, you know, it was either him or me. One of us was gonna crumble. Um, but all those things stacked on top of each other. It was just like almost too much to handle. And I didn't have peace. I didn't have peace in the storm. <coughs> so I, I called on God and, and he got me through. But, and it didn't happen easily and it didn't happen quickly. You, know, you have to walk through the pain and that's what each one of us has to do. But we can do this and that's what I'm here to tell you is that we can, I wanna encourage you to use your faith when things are hard. I want you to use your faith to walk boldly forward. I want you to use your faith in the fact that you do have peace, right? You may be saying to me, I don't have any peace. I don't feel peaceful at all. What are you kidding? And I know I've been there. I've been there much of my life. When my mom died, I didn't feel like anything but peace. When we lost, we almost lost our home and we were bare, you know, struggling just to pay, you know, bills and we didn't know what was going to happen. I had anything but peace. You know, I've lost a very dear friend to cancer and totally unfair, you know, you, you don't understand why those things happen. No peace. And I have another dear friend who's struggling with cancer and my stepfather struggling with cancer and lots of people I love are struggling with cancer, a friend's husband, so much. There's so much of life that's unfair, right? But keep going, keep going and, and believe that God's gonna turn it around for good. But there's something else. I wanna read you a scripture that talks about God turning around everything for good. Um, so it's Romans, um, Paul wrote the, the letter to the Romans, um, chapter eight, verse 28. We are sure to know that God being a partner in their labor, all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to his design and purpose, which is all of us. We're all called to his design and purpose. But I almost wish, wish Paul had said one other thing, added something here. We're assured and we know that if we, we keep going forward and we know that God has everything for good and he's gonna turn everything around, it's all gonna be for good. I feel like we have to add, if we let him, right? Because I really feel that if we don't surrender our lives to God, maybe it won't all turn out okay. We have to let God work through us. We have to, we have to be willing to be led by God for everything to be turned around, right? What happens, what I see happen all too many times is that people get stuck. Joyce Meyer always says, don't, get, don't park at the point of your pain. People get stuck at something that's really hard, that's something that you know, could be earth shattering that happened in their lives. And I'm not judging about you know, that they get stuck at that point of their pain, but God wants to turn it around for you. God wants you to keep walking forward so that he can work it out for good. God can't stop everything from happening. Or, or maybe he can, but he doesn't. So I guess he can, but he doesn't. And there's a reason we have to walk through these things because they make us stronger. Stronger. They make us more reliant on God. They make us, you know, seek Him. You know, when I was crushed when I lost my mom, I was in so much pain I can't even explain. And and anyone who's been through a loss like that understands that. And and but. What I did find was strength. All I really wanted God to do was change my circumstances. I wanted him to make me feel better. I wanted him to just make it all go away. And I begged him for that, and he didn't. But what he kept on doing was giving me more and more strength. And eventually it does get easier. Eventually you can take a deep breath. Eventually you can learn to smile again. Eventually you can get that peace restored into your heart. So I ask everyone to use their faith. And what's faith? To talk about what faith is, I'm going to go to the best definition that I feel is in the Bible is in Hebrews chapter 11. And if I can find it, I will share with you the definition of peace. It's Hebrews chapter 11, verse one. Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceives as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Okay, let's take that apart. Faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed for the things that we hope for. Think about that. 
what do you have a title for? You have a title for your car, you have a title for things you own, right? You have a deed for your house, right? That's proof of ownership. The Bible here is saying now faith is the assurance, the title, the deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of their existence, proving that they're, they're real before your senses experience, it, experience them. We have to use faith to take hold of everything that God wants us to have. To have that peace that I'm talking about, you have to have faith that it exists. If you don't have faith, you're never going to feel it. You're never gonna grab hold of it. I encourage you to understand and contemplate faith. I was listening to Stephen Furtick the other day. I love him, by the way. If you ever have a chance to listen to him, I encourage you to, to seek him out. He's got a great podcast. He's you know just an amazing person. But he was talking about faith and he talked about something. He said this, he said, he was talking to his congregation, he said, do you like this church? And they said, yeah. And he said, before there was a seat, there was a thought. What was he saying? He was saying that before this church showed up, I had to have a thought that I could create it, right? And that's what faith starts as, it's a thought, right? You, you feel something in your heart, usually God puts something in your heart, and then it comes to, to be a thought, right? Wow, maybe I'm supposed to do this. Maybe I'm supposed to, to preach on YouTube, <laughs> to share messages with people, right? That's how it started for me. Maybe I'm supposed to go to college. Maybe I'm supposed to get this job or that job. Or I'm gonna create this company and I'm gonna do this. Everything starts with a thought, right? And then what does it take? It takes faith to believe that you can get there, to see it as real before it even exists. You see it in the mind's eye, right? God puts this vision in front of you to drive you forward. When you, one of the things that I really like to do is to study the Gospels. Not just for the words, but I like to watch how Jesus reacted to people. You know, through the, obviously through the words, you could see how he reacted, see how he responded to people. One of the things, if you look closely at the Gospel message, when he healed people, he often said, your faith has made you whole, right? The woman who was bleeding uh, for all those years, and she just said, if I could touch, just touch his garment, if I could just reach out and grab him, I will be healed. And he didn't just heal her, but he said, your faith has made you whole, right? Her faith came first. The thought that if I could just reach out and touch him, I will be whole is what came before she reached out and received the healing. There were many other examples, and I'm not gonna to go to them right now because I, I don't wanna just dwell on that point, but I, you can look them up yourself, and I encourage you to read the Gospels, they're amazing. They're the life of Jesus Christ, so it's amazing to watch, you know, to hear his words, to relive those moments in the parables and the different healings and the people he raised from the dead. It's just, it's amazing. But so often, he said that, your faith has made you whole. Faith is something we need to do anything in this world. Faith is something that I encourage you to instill in your children. Teach them about faith. And I'm not just talking about faith in God. I'm talking about faith in your ability to do anything. Now, obviously, that ability comes from God, so I want you to teach them that too. But you should be talking to them about what is faith? What is faith? Contemplating what God puts in your heart. Seeing it here first before it ever exists into the world, right? Any great creation in the world started with a thought, right? Whether it's Henry Ford with the car or the Wright brothers with airplanes. They looked at a bird, the Wright brothers I heard, they looked at birds and thought, well, okay, well, birds can do it, then we should be able to do it, right? And so it starts with a thought. What have you created in your life? What have you innovated? What have you brought from nothing to something, right? Everything starts from nothing and then is created into something. My husband's a brilliant inventor and he's doing some amazing things right now. I'm really proud of him and he's working on a lot of things that he's, he's found God, which, you know, I never would have thought. You know, it's funny. Um, I'll see just a quick few stories about my husband, Ed. When I, years ago, um, he, when I decided that, it's been many years, it's probably five or six years ago where I said to him, you know, someday I wish, I, I wanna be like Joel Osteen. I wanna be like Joyce Meyer. I wanna go around and write books and preach and teach people and the word of God. And I was so excited and he said, what? What are you gonna do? And he just went like, you know, like, he almost like incensed by it. Like, what were you thinking? And like, you know, and the person you love, you think is gonna encourage you, right? I've done the same to him, by the way. We have this cart company. You know, we manufacture this special cart for moving government safes and we're selling them now. But I hated that thing. 
I have to tell you, I actually, we dragged it around for a couple of years before we decided to actually sell, have it manufactured and sell it. And so I would just be like, what do we have this for? This is a stupid thing and everything. And of course, God goes and uses that and to be our first business, our first product that we're selling out um, because God has a sense of humor. But anything, all of those things that we do in life take faith, right? What we, anything we want to do, anything we believe, we have to first have this idea and, and a vision of it, right? And that's what faith is. So if you want to have anything that God wants you to have, you have to start first with faith. You have to believe. You have to believe that Jesus died on that cross for you. You have to believe that he has a plan for your life that's for good. You have to believe that he wants you to have peace, that he left you his peace, that he, peace, that he bequeathed it to you. Everything starts with faith. I ask you to be a bright light in this world. I ask you to join me in encouraging every person on your path. I always think if everyone just encouraged the person that's in front of them every day, what a beautiful world this would be. Can you encourage one person? You don't have to go out and find people. Believe me, God will put them in your path. Since I was a little, you know, I don't remember. Since I was little, I've always been, tried to save everything. And one of the things that I do on a regular basis is to save earthworms after the rain. I've been doing it, I don't know, 30 years at least, or more probably. My son and I used to do it, my daughters and I do it. I still do it today, I save them. I, I always feel bad, but I pretty much save anything I can. I've tried to save a lot of things, not always successfully, but I, I always try. But it, it just reminded me, I feel like God led me to that to show me that there's always something right in front of you that you can do. And I ask you, find someone this week to help. Find someone to love. Find someone to encourage. Be the best you can be. Grab hold of your peace that Jesus died for you to have. Use your faith to see that you could do something great in this world and then go out and do it. I thank you for joining me today and look forward to next week. I hope that God blesses you and keeps you and holds you. Take care. Thank you.